Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today we will be exploring why Turkey is the most OP country. Well, just ever, really, it's quite overpowered. But what will we be demonstrating this in today? We will, of course, be using the wonderful game, which is Hearts of Iron 4. And for those of you who don't know what Hearts of Iron 4 is, I've created this very little one minute long trailer for you to kind of grasp an understanding of this wonderful World War II simulator. So now that you know what we've really signed ourselves up for, it's time to select the most overpowered nation in Hearts of Iron 4. But first we have to find it. Is it over here? No, that's Argentina. It's not China, it's not South Africa, France, Pfft, Finland? <laughs> I think not, Peru, no. Tibet, I didn't even know that was a real thing. Certainly not in the United Kingdom, Canada, no. God, where could it be? Maybe it's over here, the Soviet Union? No, it's here! It's Turkey! Of course it is! So, today we're going to be playing Turkey, led by Mr. Seti Man himself. What a wonderful game! We're going to be playing in Iron Man mode, which means we can't cheat! Or so the game thinks. Because, you see, this is where we really explore why Turkey is so overpowered. Because unlike other countries, it can do some magical things. You see, unlike other nations, Turkey is very special, because Turkey is not limited by this thing called Balance. Now, balance is a thing added to a game to make countries more realistic, I guess, but also not too overpowered. Take America versus Japan in Hoi 4. In reality, Japan kind of produced like, I don't know, 5% of the planes that America produced in the war, yet in Hearts of Iron 4, Japan is almost able to keep up with America. Kind of. Turkey, however, is just like their historical self, and that they are ridiculously overpowered and completely imbalanced. Turkey is perfection, and I'm now going to demonstrate that to you today using some lovely, quick and easy steps to set up your Turkey to just, you know, take over the world. Now, stage one of Operation Turkey Be Good uh, basically just requires you to research paratroopers and build as many transport planes as possible. That's really it. Also, as soon as you can, make sure to get partial mobilization. Otherwise, you're completely buggered. As we all know, realistically speaking, oh my god, did Germany just... Yeah, Germany's in a civil war. That's fine. Just ignore any of these strange things happening. It's unimportant. Your turkey will conquer the world regardless of what the actual world is up to. Now, step two, um, some would actually regard as completely optional, but it's really rather important. What you need to do is make sure your men are training on the Greek border. This gets the Greeks really quite anxious, and as we all know, as wonderful Turkish people, we really do love to get those Greeks anxious, especially when it comes to Constantinople or Istanbul, you know, whatever you want to call it. Now, of course, the more optional side to this is, at this point, you could now give the video a like or even consider subscribing. Or how about, I don't know, a giveaway of Hearts of Iron 4?
We interrupt this segment of history to bring you some wonderful news. How would you like to own your own copy of Hearts of Iron 4, the greatest World War II simulator of all? You can relive all of your favorite memories of the war, and if you have no memories of the war, why not go out and make them? All you have to do is go into the description, make sure you're subscribed, and follow the Gleam entry thing. You know, it's got all of the stuff there. Now, some of you might be wondering, why on earth would we want to invade Greece of all countries? Why not invade, say, Iraq or Iran or, I don't know, even France? That would be quite easy. I mean, surely we'd get much more out of it. Well, this is where you're actually wrong, because for all other countries, invading Greece is an absolutely ridiculous idea, and one that really shouldn't be followed up. And I'm talking to you, Mussolini. <laughs> But you see, the Greeks actually hold on to a very valuable heirloom of the Turkish dynasty of, I don't know, Mehmet II from EU4. And it's actually the kind of heirloom which will turn our rather standard Turkey into the Neo-Ottoman Empire. Now, what is so good about the Neo-Ottoman Empire? Well, it starts to unlock astral abilities that transcend the actual standard forms of Hearts of Iron 4. I'm talking about summoning literal demon troops. It's something only the Turkish people can do, I have no idea why. It's, it's honestly, it really confuses me. But you know, they can do it, so why not let them? Anyway, we are now going to defeat Greece using only one type of division template, without building any actual infantry. All it takes is the standard paratrooper template we've been given, and you add one recon company, and that's it. Uh, that's all you really need. For some reason, the game classes these guys as paratroopers. Sure, seems about right. And you want to train as many of these as humanly possible, because trust me, they're a, they're a tad overpowered. <laughs> And they also only require 40 infantry equipment and 10 support equipment. So yeah, we're just going to trade a few more of them because these are genuinely the secret weapon of the Turks. They are completely undefeatable and they will crush the Greeks. Trust me, just honestly trust me on this. It's completely broken. Just train as many of these as you can. Don't even worry about your actual troops that you have over on the border. They can just stay there. They're just meant to make the Greeks look at you whilst you prepare the ultimate air invasion. So you catch up with us about a year later. We have a justification on Greece coming up in just a few weeks time. And whilst we do have 40 divisions of our lovely paratrooper template in production, uh, none of them are ready because we don't have enough support equipment. It turns out we only produce about four a week. <laughs> oh God. Turkey, why don't you have a better industry? But don't worry, this is all temporary, because this is the weak Turkey. Remember, we are transitioning from weak and puny Turkey, which everyone knows and currently plays as, and then we will unlock the ultimate secret overpowered Turkey, which nobody knows. Also, make sure to grab encryption. It's incredible. You're gonna want it. Not that the Greeks can even understand Turkish at the moment, but with encryption, they'll understand it even less. And of course, now hold your referendum, because guess what? You're now gonna be fascist. Being fascist is incredible. It allows you to do everything, like, I don't know, declare war on Greece for a start, which is pretty useful. Yeah, that's definitely something we're going to be doing. Anyway, the time for sitting around and waiting has come to an end. Our first recon company divisions have trained, and they're ready to be the ultimate paratroopers. Now, I would say these recon companies kind of remind me of Drew Dernal, because they can only scout and that's it, they can't actually fight. They really do suck at fighting, I've got to be honest. But, you see, their strong point is that we can literally train 40 of them and just drop on every single province of Greece. Now, will this be enough to capitulate them? Probably not. It actually probably won't be. But these guys aren't designed to capitulate. These paratroopers are designed to absolutely destroy and cripple the Greek AI. As much as I love the Hearts of Iron 4 AI, they stand absolutely no chance against the greatest weapon of all. Pathfinding issues. <laughs> oh, I know it's good to be sinister, but as much as I do love the Hearts of Iron 4 AI, the Greek AI, most notably, just like the French, really, really struggles with a hard challenge. And this hard challenge is the sudden appearance of 24 divisions falling out of the sky on various places in Greece. 
Will they be able to counter it? Yes, they will. But how will they counter it? They'll send divisions away from the front line. They'll deploy more divisions to encircle. And most importantly, they will think that Turkey is open to attack. These paratrooper divisions are designed to land and be killed. They are suicide divisions. Upon their defeat, Greece will then immediately invade Turkey, believing that the sudden drop in Turkish divisions is enough to seize the capital. That's where you're wrong, Greece, my friend, because we will trick the AI even more. And with that, these wonderful battle plans have been set up. I'll see you guys back in a moment when we're about to declare war on Greece. Anyway, it's time we actually begin this war. Now naturally we are at a ridiculous advantage because these puny Greeks, they have no idea what's coming for them. All you need is those paratrooper divisions, make sure you get your planes in the air to get that air superiority, declare the war and then watch as you just cut off the Greek front line. But make sure not to get all of your divisions transported away. Make sure to keep some terrible observer divisions back at home. There we go, about 11. Because the Greeks will immediately naval invade and grab a port. This is exactly what you want them to do. Now, with the remaining observer troops you have, make sure to send them to slow down the Greek invasion. You don't want yourself capitulated. This is quite the risky maneuver. As soon as you have some Greeks baited, take some of the men off of your front line and move them to actually deal with the invasion. These will be your actual men in charge of slowing them down. Anyway, now that we've successfully cut off the Greek front line, our forces actually fighting on the front line will find it much easier to move into Greece. But this is where the actual pincer bait comes into play. We take all of our fighters and our close air support and we put them in the skies of Turkey. Greece doesn't have an air force. Yeah, this makes our air force all the more overpowered. Now, all you want to do, make sure to slow the forces down and make sure the Greeks don't get more than one port. At the moment, they only control one single port and that's covering their entire supply and movement of troops into Turkey. You want to make sure they have one because they'll keep sending in forces into Turkey, but not too many. But what's happening to our forces in Greece? Well, they're finding it very easy to actually take land. Yeah. And speaking of that, they're even getting very easy encirclements because the Greeks are in a bit of a tricky situation. Anyway, set up a invasion plan just to move forwards. Oh, is that? Oh, that's two troops encircled. Oh, rest in peace, Greek AI. Mm, three troops. I love it. And of course, send your battleship in because it's completely overpowered and really ridiculous in comparison to the Greek Navy. Oh my, mm, what an easy invasion. Anyway, this is where you want to move up and grab that port. Now all of the forces stuck in Turkey are taking about 30% attrition every tick, which is ridiculous. And guess what? They're trapped. They have no access to a port. They can't escape. As long as you hold on to that port, three quarters of the Greek army is stuck in Turkey. And they're out of supply. Oh my. And with that, send in your forces, even the observer divisions. They will have such an easy time rolling over the Greek military. And with that, your main forces can mop, mop up on the Greek homelands and march a few divisions down to Athens. God, you'll just find it so easy now. Oh, all the encirclements, they're beautiful. God, it's so easy to play Turkey. So overpowered. Oh my god. With that, Athens is taken. Make sure to hold Athens. That is all part of this challenge. There you go. Take Athens, and now you're set up for your world conquest. At this point, you found the heirlooms of Metmet Ods Osmanoglu II, and with that, you can start summoning in the Demon Hordes. You know, you want to do that, and whilst you're doing that, declare war on the entire world. Yeah. Yeah, you just want to declare war on everyone. <laughs> If you don't know how to do this, make sure to get justifications whilst you're at war. It makes justifying so much easier. And get all your justifications on the world. And watch your turkey go. Because turkey is overpowered. Anyway, ladies and gents, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a like. I'll see you all in the next one. We're the royalty, now we're breaking down the enemy. Take a hit If we die, it's fine We live for this It's all for this We're gonna stay